Hello everyone, it's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you another video. As many of you know, I am a published author and not too long ago I told you guys that I have a bunch of books that were unpublished proofs. They have these big bars across them that say not for resale from when I was double checking the interiors of all my books before I sent them to print. So I have a bunch of these books laying around and I figured what better thing to do with a bunch of really unsellable, unusable, and incomplete books than to turn them into art. So a couple videos ago I did this book folding art. I sort of created this spade shape out of book fold. This was a super fun project and a relatively easy project. So if you wanted to see how to do this, be sure to check the uh, link up there. But I thought this turned out really cool with the hardcover, but I also have a handful of um, softbacks. And actually this one I used to take my initial promo photos and it also had this not for resale across the back of it. So I low key like painted over it. So you hopefully couldn't tell. I think I did an okay job, just smeared a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think I uh, imitated it pretty pretty well, all things considered. But I thought this would be cool to try something else that I've been wanting to try for a while, and that is uh, painting book edges. All right, so big thing I'm thinking right now is this obviously has to be super light on the color and all the pages have to be really well pressed together to prevent a lot of bleeding. So I'm going to actually clamp it with these Dollar Tree clamps that I have because it's it's obviously what I have available and we do things on a budget here. I have a cup of room temperature water and a an eyedropper just so that I can really control the amount of water that I'm putting in here. Of course, I have this uh, palette, which I just got for aesthetic reasons, but man, is this not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life? Um, so I wanted to do that. And I've got a pencil. I think I might actually kind of go in and just very lightly kind of sketch uh, the design. I'm feeling okay about this right now. I'm still a little nervous though. So the paints that I lost I originally wanted to use for this that were the same ones that I used on this piece here. I did a whole video on it, but they're like color shifting. So depending on the way that you face the canvas, the colors are different. You can see the eyes switch from like a yellow to a green and the hair switches from a blue to like a red. Um, I thought that would have been just absolutely stunning, but unfortunately I, I can't find them. I don't know where they went. Um, and I also had a different set of watercolors that from that I got for like as a souvenir from the Metropolitan Museum of Art that came in like a nice little set of round stacks. Um, that's also completely missing. I prefer using those over pretty much any other watercolors I have. So a little disappointed in that front as well because those are also MIA. Um, and I used those in my watercoloring bold and brash video, which I can leave a link to in the description below as well. But I think the more that I think about it, the more I think I need to use this, um, this watercolor paper book that I made. Um, I know these were like really popular um, not too long ago as far as like, you know, something that was like on sale. You can buy these for like 20 bucks. I just made one with uh, the watercolor pencils that I had. So I think I'm going to use this just so that way I can control the very, um, something very pigmented from my watercolor pencils without having to draw directly onto the book with the pencils. I think this will be the best. And I also need to pick my brush. Well, side fact, um, don't erase anything that you write on the edge of a book. It does not erase particularly well. I might as well have just gone straight in with the uh, the paint. Uh, but I did kind of want to tell this funny story on how I kind of figured out this like technique for drawing a rose, which is like a really blocky like swirl for the middle. Um, and then alternating petals. Um, I literally just saw some like like TikTok tattoo parlor. And it was some like new guy that was like, so how do I do like a traditional style rose? And they're like, just, you know, make a blocky swirly center and just alternate the petals. And it was like, the guy was like, that's it? Like, that seems like too easy. And he's like, yeah, it works every time. There's no real, like, you don't know, need to know anything about flowers. And sure enough, I, I kind of followed it. And I think they all, uh, they all turned out kind of different, but they look as intended, right? Like, that's the point. <laughs> I just gotta keep telling myself that, you know, this is a first trial for something like this. I've never done anything like this before. And that is okay. It's okay to mess up. It's not a it's not a book that anyone can really read. It's fine. It is absolutely totally fine. So I think I wanna do it so that when it stands up this way, we start red on the top. So these bottom two are gonna be blue and violet. And let's just pop open. Our watercolor book. Let's see. 
man, these colors are not good. I actually might grab, um, the, the colors are fine, but they're not the kind of blue and deep blue and deep purple that I wanted. So I'm going to take these extra sheets, go grab my watercolor pencils, and I'm going to add the right colors on here. So for some reason, there's like two, like an indigo and then this like deeper royal blue um, and no purple. So I actually got this watercolor set from Dollar Tree that has a darker purple in it that I usually use in situations like this. I am going to, and if you've never seen this technique, I have a whole video on it. Um, I am just going to scribble a big bunch of that pigment and I'm going to pit, water my pencil, or not my pencil, I'm going to water my paintbrush and pick the pigment up off of this. Take watercolor, I'm gonna dip, dip, dip in here. You can see it's kind of coming off on here and I'm gonna also swirl it around in this a little bit just to make sure again I'm not getting too much on there you can see again it's really bright way brighter than I was anticipating and I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do these outlines let's see how it goes it's pretty nice actually All right, let's take a pause from the first half of these to talk logistics and more specifics on what I'm doing here. So um, the technique I'm going for, as I mentioned, is obviously dabbing on the pigment after I do water. So I dip in the water and then kind of rub on here for the pigment until I kind of almost scrape it into like a point. From here, I like to just make sure I've got a nice line going, a nice thin line, and I find the best way to do this is to start in the middle. So when you start in the middle, this is obviously then going to dry first, which then gives you the opportunity to go back and layer over it later without having to worry about, you know, waiting for dry time. I just think it's more effective, and obviously there's so little water here that it does dry pretty quickly. So I am starting in the center and working my way out. And I am not dabbing any pigment off. Once I have this done, um, I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit more. And using like that diluted, like a lot, a little bit more water, not a lot more water because that's danger for the book, obviously. Um, and then I do a wash over the whole rose. That way it has kind of like the darker inside and outlines and then the water like kind of fades it out so as you can see the purple is probably the best example of this the outside edges are very light it gets darker 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 blue is a little bit messy i think i'm going to try to go back in with a little bit of water once it dries and uh the green i didn't have a lot of variation in green color so um that's kind of why it looks <laughs> the way that it does but you know just kind of dipping back in as we go and i'll come back to show you the wash all right, outline finished. Now I'm going in, same kind of thing. And I'm going to darken up the inside a little bit. Now that that's done, get a little more pigment on there. As you can see, when I drag, it's still a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna take the water once. And then I have this paper towel over here, dab off twice, one on both sides, and then I'm going in again, starting from the center and working my way out. And there is red. And then I do the same thing with the green where I get the nice dark color for the outside, or for the leaves rather, wherever I put the pencil down. Um, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit because I think it's a little too much water and then I'm gonna do the same kind of wash technique I did over this one. All right. 
right, here she is, all rose painted up. Um, it turned out better than I was expecting. I, some of them I did kind of expand it a little bit, but when I take these off, of course, um, you can see it definitely spread over the pages. I did kind of want to open it up and take a look inside and see how the pages look when we do a quick flip through. This, that's kind of cool. So like, you know, kind of spreading them out. You can see the whole image. That's kind of cool, actually. I do like the way that that looks. Um, there does appear to be some bleeding, which, but not as bad as I was expecting. Hold on, let's uh, let's get a better angle. Got my big spotlight on, so let's uh, let's take a look, starting from the back. Okay, we've gotten into some of the color. That's really not super bad. Hey, well then, yeah, this was actually super fun. I really enjoyed this. Um, I think it looks kind of cool. Obviously, I don't display my books um, this direction, so it's not really a huge deal, but it went really well for a first time. And I think that this is kind of just like a cool, cool way to add a little extra something. Um, and it just turned out really cool. I thought this was a really fun project and very nice kind of like low stress paint project, especially because I wasn't worried about ruining it. So, um, with all that said, I wanted to thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like, and subscribe. I put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern standard time, and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much. And I hope to see you then. Bye.